one of the reasons why we started Videbo was that we wanted to show and to share, first of all, to relate Jesus in a personal, more intimate way than most people do, or most people imply that they had that relationship, but they don't really talk much about it. But we also wanted to, in reality, show that it doesn't require someone full of pride and ego and you know all kinds of like crazy you know back stuffed and up stuffed and you know proper and you know kind of like you know being in a reality check of how smart we are or how intelligent or bible scholar or whatever but to get back to the basics of what we really were as Jesus freaks and how we are today and that is saved by grace and we're not necessarily the smartest you know chimp in the world and we're not monkeys swinging around on trees but rather we're kind of like an orangutan you know kind of like you know doing the best that we can and we're swinging pretty good but you know what <clears throat> we do fall and sometimes you know God uses those failings and those fallings not just as a means of teaching others but also as a point of reminding us that really without the Spirit of God no man of God could be doing what they're doing. As a matter of fact, I think I see a lot of preachers and ministers, especially those that criticize other pastors or criticize other ministries, full of something other than the Spirit of God, because in meekness and in gentleness ought to be your ministry, because you'll find that if you're building yourself up, you're just deflating what God is doing in your life. But if God is choosing to use you in some way, then people will be drawn to you in a simple way because they'll figure out pretty quickly that it's not you that's doing all the talking, but rather it's God that's doing the walking through you. Because, you see, you can't talk the talk without walking the walk. And the only way you can walk the walk is if God is walking inside you because you can't do what he's doing irregardless of how smart you think you are or how intelligent you really think that you've got it together. You don't. And I think... Most men of God know that deep down inside, and some of them really keep it buried way deep down inside because they think that there's something special about them. Well, no. And that's kind of why <clears throat> sometimes when I see some kind of really off-the-wall statement made by some of these men of God, I just slap the snot out of that statement. I'm not going after the man of God because, after all, I know they're just like me. Sinner. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. They are sinners, you know. And I know that if I talk to their wife and we got real, hey, you know, they put on their pants just the same as everybody else. And, you know, there are times where they don't look so smart and they don't look so all together. But rather, like any other man, they're just an accident waiting to happen. <laughs> yeah, you know, kind of like make a mess. Well, I, I was going to follow the instructions, but I decided I already knew better. So I tried it on my own. Yeah. Right, dear. Next time, can we use a map? <laughs> Hello? So, while there is a certain reality about sometimes some men being good at being wonderkins, you know, and being the one who goes off on a tangent, you know, and is all alone, and, oh, yes, you know, they conquer, they also fail in a lot of areas. So, as long as they're a man, I know what God's plan is, and that's to keep them humble and to make them stumble and bumble at times because no man will stand in his own righteousness before a holy God who will all come before him in meekness laying down our crowns before the one who died for us who is perfect and that's the reality whether you think you're going to get a crown or you're going to get all these rewards really once you see Jesus in the reality of who he is once you comprehend the Son of God, the Son of Man, with his scars evident, and you stand face to face. You don't have much to say. There isn't this idea of getting what you ought to or you think you deserve. Rather, once you see Jesus face to face, it's more about wanting to give up anything you got. It's just for the love you see coming from him in such a scarred and marred person in the reality of Jesus the perfect one <clears throat> humility a blessed thing if you can find it 
He that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Luke 14, 11. <coughs> Watch out, Christian brothers and sisters, for the danger of arrogance in assuming that you are somebody indeed. You know, one of the things that I remind everyone about this ministry is that if not for the one, we wouldn't be done. It wouldn't be something that we would do. But if just for one, that we could talk to them in the name of the Son, then we'll do it just for the one. Because recently, yes, the ministry has exploded and grown. We shot up, as it were, in one part of our ministry from you know, a few hundred people to over 50,000 in six days, which means that by the end of the month, it's going to be well into... We don't know yet. 200,000, 300,000, it's going to be pretty large. But the point being is that the reality of any one person who we talk to or share with or relate to with Jesus, that's who we care about. We don't care about all the numbers, though they're nice to see. We care about the one person who God has inspired with His Spirit to conspire for them to come out of their shell and to step forward into the glorious light of God's grace so that they could go forward and share the testimony that they have of their life before God that they might give to someone else the gift of salvation that we've been given. And that's really all that it's all about. We don't care that you have whatever it is that you got you know, that you get from God because that's between you and God, really. The Spirit of God will use any person, anything, any vehicle, whether it be, you know, people like to say the Spirit of God is fire. No, it's not. He is a person. He will manifest himself in different ways and he will use different things to be tokens of his presence, but that's not the Spirit of God. So, God will use anything that he can. He'll use a hummingbird, he'll use a seagull, he'll use a dove, he'll use fire, tongues of cloven fire, whatever you want to call it. He'll use the gifts of the Spirit, he'll use the fruit of the Spirit, he'll use whatever he can in order to get your attention to cause you to focus off of yourself and back onto God. Because that's his job. His job is to point you to the Word of God so you can see Jesus in the Bible. That's his job. That's his focal point. He will not speak of himself, but he shall speak of me, and he will reveal me. And that's the only way that you can know Jesus. Anything that you got when it comes to knowledge of God came from the Holy Spirit. That's why we have nothing in and of ourselves. In us there dwelleth no good thing. That's our part. That's the human part of all men of God. No matter how much wisdom you try to put together, you can't connect the synopsis in your brain without there being the Spirit of God there because it's a spiritual connection. These are the physical realities that sparks go flying back and forth and you think that you got a thought process, but the spiritual connection comes from that extra part that comes in. You see, there's a three-way split there and you didn't know that. Two-way is synopsis where you've got chemicals in between. But spiritually, you also have a third part that should be connecting, and that's the Spirit of God. And He causes that connection for you to think of things and to know things of the Spirit. For without the Spirit of God, you can know nothing. Nothing. You cannot know God except the Spirit of God reveal Him to you. God will never let you hi-hat somebody else if you're a Christian. He loves you far too much to let you get away with that. He'll bless you. <laughs> You may ask, what will the Lord do if I get arrogant and presumptuous, full of pride over my victories and successes? Well, the Lord will remind you of His own example and will rebuke and chasten you in His own way. Jesus never ran out and said, I rebuke you. Kind of like, you know, you see these Pentecostal people running around. He never said, I command you. No. He said, the Lord rebuke you. The Lord commands you. He did those things that he gave the glory and honor to his Father in heaven. And oftentimes when you see these people that are trying to do deliverance ministries and doing all these weird things, they do it in their own authority rather than in the responsibility of giving glory to God the Father. And God lets them. You see, the day comes when they will stand before the Son. So God lets them. And when they stand before the Son, there is a scripture that says, Have we not cast out demons in thy name have we not done all these marvelous works 
And Jesus says, depart from me, I never knew you. The fearful thing is to fall in the hands of a living God, we're told. And that is the reality of what we ought to remind ourselves of every time we think we have our ministry or the ministry that God has given us in responsibility in doing, that somehow we have a major part and role in it. No, we get to participate with God in it. And that's what it's always been about when I say that I'm relating Jesus. I'm relating those things that I've experienced with him, but the things that he's doing in me. It's not about me doing them, believe me. Huh? If I had my freedom, you know, as everybody says we have, I would be off on a tangent, always doing some other thing. But the reality of humbling myself and submitting myself to the will of God means that I am doing what I'm doing today because God wants me to do these things and to share and relate Jesus in a simple and humble way. And that's why I look the way I do sometimes. Keeps me humble. <laughs> humble thyself in the sight of the Lord and he'll lift you up. Hey, here I am, such as I am, the way that I am. And that's why we relate vidivo the way we do. We care enough to share Jesus the way we are, sinners saved by grace. Examining ourselves to see if we be found in the faith. Proving our ministry by way of demonstrating that God is the one who is accomplishing his purposes through that with which he has chosen to do. And the very fact that he can use anyone means that he can use you as easily as he's using me. And he probably is using you more so, and I pray that he does. Our Lord Jesus Christ would not allow any success or temporary honor to lead him astray. The Lord had no servants. He bossed no one around. He was the Lord, but he never took the tyrannical attitude toward anyone. I think it is very good spiritual advice that we should never tie ourselves up to public opinion and never consider any honors we may receive as being due us because of our superior gifts. In that day of the triumphal entry into Jerusalem, the crowd acclaimed him and cried, Hosanna. But on the very next Friday, they joined in the shout, Crucify him. Humility is a blessed thing if you can find it. Early church fathers wrote that if a man feels that he is getting somewhere in the kingdom of God, that's pride. Until that dies, he is getting nowhere. If any man thinks he knows anything, he knows nothing at all, we're told. And the reality is, it's a fact. You do not have any of the knowledge that you've gotten by way of your own personal study, although you may think so. You have what you get and you've gotten remembrance by way of the Holy Spirit causing you to remember whatsoever things Jesus has taught you. That's his gift. That's his calling. That's his ability. That's his directive from God the Father as he was sent as the comforter to us, but he was sent as the spirit of truth. And that spirit of truth causes us to remember those things that Jesus said. So really, it's not about us. Never has been, never will be. It is all about Him, and we always need to remind ourselves of that. Otherwise, when pride enters in, believe me, you find out very fast how quickly the Spirit of God leaves.